What's up guys, it's KCBQ and back again with another video this week. And I'm standing outside of 3519 South Versailles, a new listing in Dallas, Texas from Janelle Alcantara from Sotheby's Realty. Now, if you're an avid watcher of my YouTube channel, you know I am a huge investor and an advocate of investing in real estate. And let me tell you, this property may not be perfect for the first time investor, but someone in my situation that's trying to kind of settle down into a property and live there long term, this is a perfect opportunity. Before I jump into why this particular house is a terrific investment, let me show you guys the house real quick. So this is located in the heart of Dallas, Texas. As you come into the house itself here, you're opening the front door to a fresh living space. You've got some staircases that will lead you to the next two floors, which I'll get to in a second. But down this way, you've got a huge covered back porch here with a sliding glass door. And honestly, for the size of Dallas, you're talking about a backyard that has some size. Now, if you're familiar with the downtown area, we don't have a lot of size when it comes to backyards. So to be able to have this size of a backyard, I personally have two dogs, it's a good asset to the house. You do have a half bath downstairs and this exits over to your two car garage. This two car garage also has a substantial amount of storage underneath those stairs. And let's head upstairs, guys. Now there is a nice little workout studio on the first floor before you head up the actual stairs to the main living room. Now upon reaching the second level, guys, you actually have a whole view of the first floor down below, and you also have beautiful skylights that are fixed up above for your rooftop deck. Again, we will get there in a second, but upon entry of this second floor main living area, this is gonna be where a majority of the hosting will happen. You've got this beautiful accent wall with tile for your fireplace. This is your main living space. You've got your formal dining still and plenty of room in this kitchen itself. This kitchen has plenty of space. There are some different aspects of my home that uh, were kind of upgraded. This house doesn't have, one of them being the waterfall wall. But one thing that my house doesn't have is you've got your own wine cooler on the side. Now, there are some uh, aspects of the house where you know, you've still got cabinetry on the front end here, but again, you still don't have the waterfall on the other side, but still a beautiful, beautiful kitchen. So let's head over to what may usually be probably a more master looking room in some homes, but this is actually a full guest suite. So we've got an empty room here, but still a good size full bath here with a toilet, shower, and vanity. Heading around back into the other side of the house. This other side of the house is going to be, as you know it, your primary bedroom. We're gonna be walking down this hallway here. Just giving you an idea though of kind of what's happening in this area though. This is a rather expensive home. You've got a lot of people that are tearing down homes and building homes like this, but you can kind of see what your next door neighbor is and kind of what this area was and is currently, but is moving into, okay? So moving into here, you've got your rather large primary bedroom here that's already furnished out. Moving into your bathroom, there are a couple aspects of this bathroom that I really do like. You have a double vanity, but that double vanity has two full separate vanities, meaning you've got one person's entire countertop here and any kind of storage that they may need. And then on the flip side, you still have a completely separate vanity and sink over here. Now, as you can see, this shower is massive. You can have many people in this shower and it is tiled all the way from the roof to the floor. Now, going back a little over here, you're gonna say some people will, uh, depending on if you live in Texas, may be a average size closet, but for most people, this is massive, guys. You've got your traditional toilet here. One aspect that a lot of people are doing in newer homes are the utility room. The utility room from the closet or from the bathroom itself, but that utility room actually heads back out to the main living area. Some people like that, some people don't. I think it's a nice touch to just be able to go straight into the utility room and change a load of laundry, rather than having to go all the way through your master or your primary bedroom to get to the vanity. Again, another half bath here for all of your guests, and that concludes a majority of this second level floor. And lastly, guys, let's get to the rooftop deck. 
All right, guys, we are on the third floor, which is the rooftop deck. A lot of what downtown Dallas is doing nowadays are building these three-story tall buildings with a rooftop deck because you have an absolutely incredible opportunity to take a look at the downtown views. Now, this is, again, in the heart of Dallas. You've kind of gotten the, the north side of downtown, so you do have some good views up here. And so also perks of being up here, too, you've got a nice area to just hang out. They've actually turfed the deck up here, which I think is a great final touch. Let's take a look at the view. So you guys are probably asking me, Casey, what makes a brand new home that's modern, incredible, and looks amazing in the center of downtown Dallas, why is it a great investment property? Well, I haven't shown you where I am standing now, guys. This is a great opportunity. Right outside here, you can see the front door. But what is this, guys? This is a sliding door that can be closed off here. And similar to the very house that I live in now, this can be framed an entire separate area of the house. You've got a full-fledged kitchen here. You've got a living and small dining area here. You do have access to the exterior, okay? Again, the builders probably here have actually been, I wouldn't be surprised if they've seen my video as far as detailing the opportunity that you can you know, build your own custom home with a custom Airbnb suite. This is the utility room. So yes, someone a long term could even be staying here. You've got your own utility room. You've got your own kitchen. You've got your own full bedroom here. Plenty of closet space. And then again, a full bathroom here with a shower, toilet, and sink. So is this a perfect investment for the first time home buyer? Absolutely not. I can tell you the price of this home is not gonna be favorable for an individual that is going out and looking to invest in real estate and buy their first house. Now, for instance, my situation where I've gone through four or five properties, I've accumulated enough rental properties to where, you know, I think middle of next year, I'm gonna be sitting close to $30,000 a month in rental income. This could be a great next purchase where I'm buying a brand new home that has everything that I could possibly need, but I'm not gonna to have to pay my entire mortgage because I have this private Airbnb suite on the side of my house that's going to be paying a good portion of my mortgage. Now, another perk here is this is zoned a single family home. Now, because the Airbnb suite is still connected to the home, it doesn't lose any value like an ADU, like an accessory dwelling unit may. If you have a house and then a back unit or a house and a garage with a second floor unit, that second floor unit is not going to appraise and be the same or equal value as the regular house itself. Now this is part of the home. So the square feet that you actually have in this unit is still going to be the same value as your master bedroom, your balcony, so on and so forth. It's going to hold value even more. But again, single family, so you only have to put 20% down to avoid PMI versus a multifamily. If you're buying it as an investment, you're gonna to have to put 25% down. Now, I don't personally know the agent and I don't personally know the builder, but what I can tell you is if people are looking to be creative, which I tell people to do this all the time, be as creative as you possibly can be, this is a great investment. Now, if my life circumstances were a little bit different, I would actually consider putting an offer on this house. The reason being is I would have that entire second floor really all to myself. Now, the downside is I have two dogs, so I'd have to constantly bring them downstairs to put them outside, which is not ideal for me. But when it comes to the house that I'm actually living in, I'm coming up to my two-year mark. That two-year mark, if you're well aware of, and I decide to sell that house, I'm not gonna be paying any capital gains. Now, I do need to sell it before that five-year threshold for having lived two years of the last five to avoid capital gains. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you're buying a primary residence and living there for at least two years, I highly suggest that you sell within the first five or you hold it long-term. Once you get to that year six and you haven't lived there, for the last two of the last five years, you're gonna go back and waste those two years that you did live there and wind up actually having to pay capital gains when you sell. So either long-term hold it or sell it within those first five years as long as you've lived there for two. Now me and my situation now, I'm coming up close to that two-year threshold, so it would be ideal to either decide if I'm gonna be living there long-term or renting it out long-term or deciding to sell. Now I can tell you the next about 12 months, a lot of things are gonna be changing in my life, so stay tuned. Make sure to like and subscribe, guys. It really does help. And if you have any questions regarding this personal property, I love to represent you. I am a Dallas realtor myself. If you're looking to do this in a different metro, I've got agents across the country that can meet with builders and help you out. Again, this is not ideal probably for the first time investor, but if you've got a decent portfolio and you can man a little bit larger mortgage, 
this could be a great opportunity.